We would like to thank members of the school board, the executive leadership team, and various stakeholder groups, including the Student Services Advisory Council, for your continued support and advocacy of the roles of APS psychologists and social workers. We are so fortunate to have a community that cares and commits to the work of creating safe and supportive schools and supporting the mental health and well being of our students. Thanks to the advocacy of our community members, the school board committed to a reduced ratio for APS psychologists and social workers a few years ago. This has allowed us to expand beyond our traditional roles and move to focus on earlier intervention and prevention across multiple tiers of support. Student services staff are able to provide direct intervention with students through individual and group counseling, social emotional learning, and individualized academic instruction based on specific student learning needs. We also provide indirect intervention through consultation with staff and parents, procuring resources for families, collaborating with community agencies, and collecting and interpreting data and monitoring student progress. We work within a multidisciplinary team to create a network of support for students to ensure that the needs of the whole child are met, including that every student has access to mental health support and a trusted adult at school. We all are aware that there have been many, many challenges during this past calendar year and stress levels are high. But we want our community to know that we are here as a source of support and strength for students, staff, and families. This first set of videos will highlight some of the work that we are doing directly with students. These include individual and group counseling, informal check-ins with students, attendance and engagement monitoring, as well as some truly innovative ways to connect with students during this time of virtual schooling. One video also informs us about what we do in this virtual setting when we have concerns about a student's safety and well being. As we implement individual counseling services via telehealth, we strive to create content and lessons that are engaging while also meet our students' unique interests and learning needs. One way this has been accomplished is to create virtual counseling offices and to convert resources such as zones of regulation into an online format. We also offer various socialization opportunities through lunchtime chat and chills. We are also a resource for supporting students in learning and practicing self-regulation strategies. At many elementary schools, teachers create calm down corners or chill zones for their students. During this period of distance learning, we have created virtual calming corners that allow students to access mindfulness, relaxation, art, and physical activities to help students regulate their minds and bodies in order to be more available for learning. Psychologists also support students' social-emotional growth through group counseling. Especially during these times, it's really important to give students an opportunity to not only connect with their peers, but also a mental health professional in their building. An example of a recently completed group focused on coping strategies or social-emotional regulation skills, so ways that students can calm themselves down and sort of reset their bodies while still feeling good about themselves. Um, we like to do activities in these groups to provide students an opportunity to sort of practice what they learn, but also to learn from their peers. Something that's become even more important during COVID-19 is how we conduct student engagement. Usually during the course of a school day, we have kids kind of in our physical custody and are able to get a hold of them a lot easier by calling the classrooms or walking down and finding them ourselves. Now we're relying on parents and phone and text and email, Canvas. We've had to get really creative of how we reach out to kids to make sure that um, they're safe and healthy and that they're engaged with school as best we can all be right now.
Psychologists use a variety of materials to support the social emotional needs of students. During COVID, I thought it would be a good idea to provide some of those materials to students in their homes. So I developed these Gleagle Comfort Kits. The kits have a variety of materials that students can use to help support them in managing their stress and regulating their emotions. School psychologists routinely respond to student needs. Recently, a few students at my school were identified for possible reading concerns. The parents and teachers were having difficulty figuring out how to add even more reading practice time into their already busy schedules. I was able to step in and provide daily reading practice with these students. Now, every day for a half hour, we read together virtually. The benefit is mutual. The students get to work on their reading skills and form a trusting relationship with a staff member that they might not get to know otherwise. And I get to work with students outside of my conventional caseload, get to know them and watch their reading skills develop. While not a traditional counseling role, it is an example of how school psychologists give students tools, strategies, or opportunities that they need to reach their goals. High schools this year are delivering social emotional learning lessons through a weekly advisory period occurring on asynchronous Mondays. At Wakefield High School, we call this advisory period Warriors Period. This program is designed to build relationships with students outside of the classroom setting and help students feel connected to their school, especially during COVID. It also has a heavy emphasis on wellness. Topics so far this year have included coping during COVID, self-care, goal setting, time management, creating a positive school climate, and mindfulness. As the school psychologist, Warriors Period presents a unique opportunity for me to have an additional time to touch base with a select group of students, many of whom are on my caseload. During Warriors Period, I am able to monitor student responses to social and emotional learning activities, and occasionally observe students in action, demonstrating progress on their social, emotional, or counseling IEP goals. As APS social workers, we have always um, worked with attendance, but right now, due to COVID, this has become a major part of our role. And at my elementary school, we have been addressing attendance concerns with families via phone calls, as well as Teams calls, uh, sometimes with students, just to reiterate the importance of making sure that they're logging on every day and participating in their class. Um, and it does seem to be very helpful after we've had conversations with parents via phone or on a Teams call, we do see an increase um, in participation of our students and um, a decrease in you know their missed days in class. So we have seen that that has been pretty helpful. The pandemic has been difficult for many of our students. Sometimes we hear from parents, teachers, or concerned friends that a student is thinking about harming themselves. Sometimes we hear from the students themselves. So we've developed a process where we notify the parent and right then and there do a video call with the student to assess what should be the next steps. Some of those next steps could be hospitalization, same day access with the Department of Social Services, or an immediate assessment through a mobile crisis unit. We used to be able to do these assessments in person. However, it makes me happy to know that our virtual crisis interventions have been successful in reaching our APS students. The next umbrella that our work falls under is connecting with and supporting parents and families. These next videos focus on consultations with parents, parenting workshops, providing resources to families, including during the holiday season, connecting families to community agencies, and supporting students who are experiencing homelessness. Social workers are trained listeners. So parent consultation is something that we do a lot of, uh, particularly during COVID, um, where parents have had a front row seat to 
learning um, with their students, which can be quite challenging. So we listen to those concerns, connect families to resources, sometimes provide space for parents to support each other through parent coffees or virtual meetings over uh, Teams, as well as providing social emotional learning for parents to help parents with uh, re remember what coping skills they may already have or to introduce new coping skills. I'm here at the Parent Resource Center. The PRC is an awesome resource for Arlington Public Schools families. School psychologists often partner with the PRC. In fact, I'll be here later this month with colleagues to present a workshop on how to talk to your kids about race and discrimination. School social workers are often the first point of contact when students and families are struggling to meet basic needs. We walk families through the process of seeking out community assistance, from phone calls to paperwork. Sometimes the need isn't as simple as a winter coat or food, and social workers have to play the role of investigator. We might make 10 or even 15 phone calls to track down the right resource for a family. The need has grown since last March, but school social workers are determined not to let our families fall through the cracks. As we all know, this has been a difficult time period for our community. I was able to organize a holiday drive with the help of my colleagues to support our families in need. Altogether, we were able to help about 50 families across both of my schools. We made sure that each member within the family's household received holiday wish list items. It was truly rewarding and I hope to do something like this in the future. In my role as the Homeless and Foster Care Liaison for Arlington Public Schools, I work very closely with school teams as well as some of our community programs serving individuals who have lost their housing, including our area shelters as well as the Department of Human Services, Housing Division, and a number of private agencies that reach out to families to provide assistance. What we do is when we can identify any student who has lost their housing due to these hardship reasons, then we will guarantee stability in that school that they can continue coming and provide services such as transportation, tutoring, free school meals, and a variety of other supports. As school social workers, we have always maintained relationships with community agencies. During COVID, we quickly learned that we had to immensely increase those relationships to quickly address the needs that our APS students and families had during this unprecedented time. Social workers have been meeting with Arlington DHS, Community and Schools, Thrive, and many other organizations to bridge those needs to our students and families for housing, food, rent, clothing, and other emergency needs that have come up since this pandemic has started. Because of this work, we have been able to provide updated resources that our families are in need of in an ever-changing world with resources that have never been in greater need. One example of this work is to provide right now needs through Amazon's generous donation and with a partnership with community and schools. In addition to our work with parents and families, psychologists and social workers spend a great deal of time supporting the work of teachers and instructional staff. This occurs through teacher consultation, responding to concerns that may be academic, social emotional, or behavioral in nature. We also provide professional development to APS staff, both at our individual schools as well as on a countywide basis. A very important project at the elementary level that has become a part of my role in the school is to provide presentations to staff as well as to parents as needed. Last year, I had the opportunity to present to the entire school staff about trauma. We focused in on tools to best support our students who manifest behaviors associated with trauma and how we can be a trauma-sensitive school as a whole. Additionally, I presented about various important topics to be aware of, such as bullying and building resiliency skills in the times of COVID to parents. School social workers consult and collaborate with teachers and other school staff daily to support student engagement and learning. When a student is struggling, teachers seek me out as they recognize that students face barriers to learning that are not necessarily school related, such as parental unemployment, health concerns, or safety issues. 
This collaboration has been especially critical during the pandemic, which has caused enormous stress on families. What does this look like on a daily basis? It may be an informal meeting to brainstorm with teachers. It may be a phone call to a caregiver or maybe a check-in with a student. The end goal is always the same, providing supports and resources so that each and every student has the opportunity to thrive. Finally, a large portion of our work is acting as part of a multidisciplinary team at our individual schools to support specific learning needs, including completing evaluations to help determine eligibility for special education services, as well as to inform recommendations for interventions and supports for these students. Transitioning to the virtual world has not slowed us down. We have learned to adapt our assessment practices to the virtual setting. We've established an entirely new protocol for hybrid in-person assessments, and we continue to arrive at innovative solutions to obtain data about student learning and progress to make informed decisions. As school psychologists in APS, one of the ways in which we support students is by providing comprehensive psychological evaluations for students suspected of having a disability. Due to the health and safety concerns posed by COVID-19, this has been a challenge for districts across the country. In APS, the school psychologists have managed to work with district level as well as school-based staff in order to set up and appropriately equip 15 testing sites across 10 different schools and the SciFax Education Center in order to ensure that our students are provided with the most quality assessments possible while maintaining the highest level of safety standards. Shannon Odom and I'm one of the two full-time psychologists working with Child Find and we've been very busy since last spring moving all of our services online including all meetings and assessments and we've been utilizing some nice online assessment tools SEPTA generously provided us with a grant in order to give families toys and tools to use during testing that they may not otherwise have. We've been developing an online assessment tool and we totally revamped our website this past spring to provide families with information about the special education process, about development, and to give information about upcoming events, to provide information regarding webinars, ebooks for parents and for their children, as well as to provide an opportunity for parents to request a consultation with one of our specialists. As a bilingual school psychologist, I have the opportunity to support schools, my colleagues, and students and families through the Multicultural Assessment Team or MAT Team, which is a team comprised of several bilingual school psychologists. In APS, we do have a large number of bilingual students, particularly Spanish speakers. Uh, when students are brought up for special education evaluations, I will consult with the school psychologist to determine if a native language assessment is needed. If so, through the MAT team, we look at what will be the most culturally and linguistically fair assessments to give. Generally, there are limitations in assessments for non-English speakers, and with COVID, some of those assessments became even more limited and are not feasible to give, uh, given safety measures put in place. However, the MAT team was able to identify measures that could still be given and provide school teams and parents with information about a student's learning so that decisions could still be made about how to best support a student. During these COVID times, we're still doing social history interviews to help determine if students are eligible for special education. Instead of meeting the parent in our office or their home, we meet virtually, and it's worked out. We still get to listen to a parent, to hear the parent tell the story of their child, to hear their concerns, so that we can determine how to best meet their needs. After one visit, a parent said to me, I kind of feel like I just had a virtual therapy session, and I hope they did feel uh, my care and concern for them and their child. Thank you for your time and we hope that you appreciated this video as a, a window into our work and an opportunity for us to showcase some of the many contributions that are made by APS psychologists and social workers. Mm -hmm.